everyone. Welcome to this episode of A Walk with Walsh. I just say I'm really, really honored, excited, but really thrilled to have the guest that we have today because I might have asked him possibly a hundred times in the past year to come on. Maybe? hundred? Maybe. Maybe 200. No. <laughs> it's taken a year, but I'm so thankful that you're here because I think your message is really important. And everyone, this is Steve Wazotsky. Steve is a veteran of 29 years almost. 28 and a half. 28, okay, 28 yeah. and a half. And he now resides in New York City and now works in corporate America. And I really wanted him on the show to talk about his experience in the Navy and to also talk about what it was like to transition going from military life to being a civilian. So thank you, Steve, for being here. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. You want to go for a walk? Let's do it. Let's go talk. Let's do it. Great. So give me a little bit of a background about how you started in the military. Well, I graduated from high school in Pennsylvania. Okay. I went to the United States Naval Academy All right. in Maryland. And I entered into the Navy. Mm -hmm. And I became a special warfare officer in the Navy. Okay. Which is a SEAL. Okay. And I did that for about 28 and a half years. And I retired approximately three years ago. Wow. So spending that much time in those special forces, special operations, yeah. were you traveling all over the world? Yeah, I had the good fortune to yeah. deploy uh, to many different countries, and I actually lived in a number of different places Did you? as well. I lived in Panama, in Central America. Okay. Lived in Puerto Rico for a while. I lived in Germany. I lived in Italy. Yeah. And I spent a great deal of time in Southeast Asia. Wow. In the Middle East, in South America, mm -hmm. and in a number of other uh, places with my colleagues. So when you were doing that, you really were able to take a lot of different opportunities to get to know the culture, I guess, if you spend enough time there, correct? Yeah, that was one yeah. of my most uh, favorite things to do, really? is learn the culture, mm -hmm. the music, the food, some of the language maybe, Yeah. try to see the world through the other people's yeah. eyes, because sure. it directly contributed to our success wow. uh, in what we were doing. So then spending that much time uh, doing that, was it hard to step away and retire and then say, yes, I'm going to get a job in corporate America? Were you a little nervous about that or were you hesitant or were you excited? I say I was nervous. Um, yeah. I missed the lifestyle. I missed the camaraderie with yeah. the guys that I worked with, most of all. Yeah. Um, but I was ready to retire. It was, good. it was a good time to transition for me and start a new phase of life. Would you mind giving us a little bit of a feeling of what you felt like transitioning from that, you know, going from being in the Navy to going into corporate life. And what was it like for you? How did it feel? Or were you, how did you do it? I know it's a lot of questions at once, but I think that would be really helpful for a lot of people to know what the feelings were and, and how did you find the job and how did you do it? Well, uh, it is a big transition. Yeah. Uh, I've been doing the same thing for quite a long time, even though it was a little bit unique you know, sure. in the military world. Um, I talked to some friends uh, about what their experiences were, and I really got lucky and found a, a great position in New York City. And I have to admit, I did not do a lot of preparation. I didn't okay. do a lot of focused transition training or anything like that. And okay. I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. Um, but those opportunities but are out there to do some quite training? Quite a few, yeah. Okay. A lot. A lot of uh, great programs. Um, I've been associated with a few of them. Uh, are they, I'm sorry, are they national programs or are they more local programs? Um, some are focused broadly on, on veterans as a whole and some okay. are focused on certain smaller communities. For example, in the special operations community that uh, I was in, there's a, a really interesting group called the Honor Foundation okay. that focuses on transition uh, hmm. assistance for members of the special operations community, specifically the, okay. the SEAL community, and they've had a lot of good success recently. That's great. So you didn't have to worry about that part. You just kind of went into this role and kind of jumped in head first? Yeah, I did. Yeah. But to be honest, there are a lot of things, mm -hmm. a lot of traits, a lot of uh, skills that one uh, develops sure. in, the in the military that translate pretty well to certain um, jobs like the one I have. Like what? Well, um, I think first and foremost, mm -hmm. uh, the most important thing that I think military people have, generally speaking, is yeah. a is a sense of service, uh, sure. service over self, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> some, to do something for the greater good, yeah, and to give back, uh, not just maybe to the United States, but to the world 
and we in the military often focus on protecting innocent people sure. or good people from bad people. Yeah. So I think that um, is a really good foundational trait that translates really well into the into any job. So the service over self, giving something back, uh, is a really good uh, trait that. And those are the kind of things that <clears throat> these employers can look out for and say, you know, these Absolutely. people are used to having leadership positions, they're used to leading teams, they're used to leading very big projects. I mean, that's but, what they could be looking for. Yeah, uh, exactly. And another, another thing in my case and that of my former colleagues is the, is the global uh, sure. network. I had a boss in the military whose one of his priorities was mm -hmm. to build a global network. Wow. So I work at a company now that has a really diverse, rich global network of people and some of my best interactions are with my colleagues from the United Overseas. Kingdom, yeah. from the Philippines, from India, yeah. uh, same countries where I worked when I was in the military. So um, having that global network, being able to see the world through their eyes, identifying with their issues, mm -hmm. understanding their culture naturally helps me do my job uh, better. So it must make you feel good to be able to connect with these people because you've, you've been there and you've seen where they are and you can possibly speak part of their language, maybe? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And, and more importantly, we're all part of the same family. And in the military, we're yeah. all together in a coalition protecting innocent people from bad people. Yeah. And that translates really well into my corporate job where we are part of the same family, protecting the firm, protecting its assets, protecting its people. Uh, that's a really good point. Way. I think it's a really good point because I think when, I don't know this because I've never served, but I would think that a lot of people just want to be a part of a community again and feel like they can add value somewhere, Absolutely. especially after all these years of doing so much for the country. Um, and really having that sense of community saying, look, at, I, I've done all this and I really want to keep doing it. Maybe my skill set would be great here. Absolutely. And one of the great things that I found in the, in the U.S. military was the diversity, uh, okay. both ethnic and gender diversity. Yeah. We had a very um, small team of high-performing people and mm -hmm. some of whom happened to be women. Okay. Uh, so that those experience, some of our best helicopter pilots, for example, were women sure. or intelligence officers yeah. and analysts were women. So now I come into this world in corporate America and having that experience gives me a chance to empower those same types of programs in a very meaningful, real way too. So. That's fantastic. You know, another thing worth mentioning um, is the technical uh, innovation side. I was fortunate okay. enough to be in a world where mm. tech innovation and pushing the envelope with all things cyber security oh, related of and, and, and biometrics mm -hmm. uh, related were, was a priority. So I'm able to use that as well in my current job in a, in a very interesting and innovative way. Uh, I also. bet more. So that's, that's a really cool thing. More now than ever? Yes, yeah. very much. Yeah. Great, so great, great skill sets to have. Why don't we sit down some more? We can talk about it. Sure. Well, everyone's different. Yeah. You know? um, and there's no one size fits all approach. Let's over here. So, I really would like to ask your thoughts about what it means to be a healthy leader, whether that be in the military or even in civilian life or in corporate America. What does that mean to you? Well, I think leadership is leadership. If mm -hmm. you're a good leader in the military, yeah. usually those traits translate to almost any other environment. I was fortunate enough that I had a, a lot of really good leaders. I came from a world where the best leaders were usually um, quiet professionals. Yep. They walked the walk. They didn't just talk the talk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a fan of the saying that the, uh, the the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. Oh, I like that. Wait, wait. Say that again. The loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. That's a good one. That's a good um, point. So, you know, you and I came from a world where you would never ask uh, the people that work for you to do anything that you hadn't done mm. yourself or that you weren't prepared to do yourself. You lead the way, you lead by example, point. you provide inspiration, you mm. inspire people to do things that they otherwise wouldn't be capable of doing. I think that's something really important to teach young people uh, when they're just going into any business to really watch their bosses and their bosses' bosses do jobs that you wouldn't expect them to do because maybe you think that they were too high up on the chain, no matter what. So yeah. to see them do jobs that you might think you know they would never do it's nice to see leaders do things that anyone should be doing yeah I, you know it's it's the little things too. absolutely you know i pick up after myself i pick up the trash i don't let people carry my bags if yeah if i can help it i yep. 
you know, you say hi and you say thank you and you smile and you shake hands, whether it's the janitor in the building Absolutely. or the president of the company. Everyone's treated the same. Treated the same. You know, one of the guys I used to work, I have this mnemonic that sometimes I think about. Yeah. Uh, it's AHA, it's A-H-A, three simple letters mm -hmm. that mean awareness, okay. humility, and approachability. Awareness, humility, and approachability. Approachability. Yeah, I, like I think that. those are three really important traits. Of, those are good of ones any, to remember, guys. <laughs> of any good leader, yeah. Yep. Uh, if you're not aware, if you're not aware of the impact mm -hmm. of your words, your actions, and if you're not aware of why you do the things you do, how yeah. are you ever going to be a, a good inspirational leader? And humility is very important. Incredibly important. I don't think that's taught enough, humility. I think, I think that's a key one. I think it's really, really important because if you have humility, then you are very empathetic to others as well, I think. And also, I think a lack of humility mm -hmm. often means uh, insecurity mm. or compensating for some other shortcoming. Yeah. Um, and approachability, if you're not an approachable leader, if you are a toxic leader oh, yeah. or someone who uh, is, your, your people are not comfortable speaking with yes. or sharing their ideas with or coming to if they have a problem, how are you ever going to be uh, effective? That's true. So I think that aha mnemonic is a really good... I like uh, that one. I don't think I've ever heard that one before. Yeah. But it makes so much sense because I know so many of us have been in those toxic environments that when you're in it, you recognize how bad it really is. You think, wow, I have to get out. <laughs> I don't want the people around me to be affected because you might be aware and might be able to do something about it, but other people aren't. So how do you then protect those other people around those toxic environments? So it's good to kind of be aware of who you are um, and what kind of leader you can be. But I like that. You've got to get rid of toxic leaders. Yeah. They'll bring down the company. They'll bring down the organization. Yeah, it's true. Thank you for that. That was really helpful. You're welcome. I have one more question I'd like to ask Steve, because I think this is an important one, no matter who you are and what kind of business you might be in. But I think it's about a teachable moment, something that you learned or something that you teach others, something that you've always had with you. Is that a tough one? Because there's so many? Yeah, there are quite a few. <laughs> yeah. um, I think um, the main general uh, thing that I would answer there is the um, taking care of the, of the people that you work mm -hmm. with and yeah. that work for you and their, and their families, by extension. One of my former bosses, the uh, same guy that wanted to build the global network, also mm -hmm. made as a priority. Uh, something that he referred to as preservation, okay. or we refer to as preservation of the force and the family. Hmm. Because if you if you have employees or colleagues who are not doing well, if yeah. they've got issues or they've got problems at home or problems with their family or medical issues or psychological issues or things that are distracting them yeah. in their lives, they'll never be able to come to work and, and do a good job, whether it's in the military or any yeah, other right. environment. So. That takes a lot of focus, and mm. it's you are, you're going to have to make some compromises. But in the long run, it really makes a difference if you have a strong yeah. uh, force, a, a happy, healthy workforce with happy, healthy families that are well cared for, and that yeah. think that they're being well cared for, and that's know key. that that's a priority. Yeah, that can make a huge difference in the success of an organization. So, and that and that um, in my personal life, that applied to the non-U.S. forces with whom we served. Mm -hmm. We were lucky in, in the special operations community to be in very close quarters with a lot of these, I bet. these yeah. men in yep. you know, different countries, Iraq and maybe Afghanistan, and we always uh, treated them as equals. Uh, I'll never forget one time when we were in um, <clears throat> western Iraq, we showed up at the dining hall mm -hmm. together with our Iraqi colleagues, yeah. and they wouldn't let us in. Oh, really? Because there were Iraqis with us, and we said, oh. if they're not coming in, we're not going in. Wow. We left, and uh, they changed the rules shortly after that. That's great. But um, That's interesting. Really interesting, because it's probably something you didn't think about. Well, we thought about it every day, but I think the other the other people okay. didn't, never had, hadn't seen that. The, okay. other, the other soldiers, the other Experienced uh, it. Uh, military personnel. Yeah. It almost seems like a simple rule, but a lot of people don't think about protection of the forest and family. It's got to be a basic foundational mm -hmm. factor. I think there are some really important parts of what it means to be a veteran, because I feel like some people talk about it, like they are the veteran and then there's something else. Or are there stereotypes around being veterans? Or what do you think about the word veteran and what it means to you? 
Yeah, there are a lot of stereotypes. And as a veteran, you have to be aware that not everybody understands what that means. Very mm -hmm. few people have really served in the military. Sure. So there are a lot of misconceptions out there, a lot yeah. of, a lot of um, unrealistic uh, ideas about what veterans bring to the workplace. I've witnessed a few awkward situations where a veteran uh, was put into a workplace, mm -hmm. a very well-intentioned job placement, but yeah. it failed miserably because the people in that environment thought uh, this veteran might have PTSD or thought this oh. this military young man sure. may have been in combat and you know was mm -hmm. a little bit unstable or something like mm -hmm. that. Nothing could have been farther from the truth, but there were that the, was their he, stereotype. He was a victim of those stereotypes, and yeah. we've we've confronted that pretty well where I work by education on mm -hmm. both sides. Um, and I also think there's um, a challenge with an unchecked benevolence. I call it unchecked benevolence. Every, okay. you know, everyone f sometimes falls all over themselves to help the veterans, okay. but they don't really no. sometimes put a lot of thought into how they're going to do that. And that can result in well-intentioned, but awkward consequences. I, th I think as a veteran, you have to be very wary and manage your expectations and understand mm -hmm. that um, it's a more nuanced environment and sure. that not everyone understands what a veteran is. And really decide how you want to wear that veteran status on your sleeve. Do you define yourself as a veteran? Is that yeah. the main thing that you, the way you portray yourself? Or do you do a lot of, are you known for a lot of other things and mm -hmm. you just happen to be a veteran as well? That's a good point. So. That's a really good point. Cause I think about, I know a lot of veterans in my life, but I, some of them I wouldn't have even have known that they were a veteran cause they don't really talk about it. But there are other people that I do know that they are, I am a veteran, and then I'm also this. So yeah, it's a good I, point I, you bring I'm that up. I'm very proud of my service. I loved it. Of course. It was the best, uh, some of the best times in my life that all yeah. of best friends I've ever made. Yeah. I think about it a lot. Yeah. But I don't often talk about it, and mm -hmm. I don't always define myself as, as a veteran. I prefer to be known as, as a good father, as a, a smart person, yeah. uh, a guy who cares about travel and uh, likes so many to things. and gets things done in the workplace mm -hmm. and things like that. And I also happen to be in the military for a while too. You know, I have a question because I think this goes back to, we can even stop here and ask, because I really think it's important to d discuss what PTSD means because people that are hiring other people from that were veterans, what do they look out for? Or is, how do people get help or what do you, how do people go into the workplace that might be suffering? Um, well, I think it's it's on both sides. You have to be very conscious and sure. self-aware that mm -hmm. you may have some challenges. You have to be. It would helps if you're comfortable talking about it. Yeah. And on the on, on the employee employer side, mm -hmm. I think it's really important for you to feel comfortable talking to the veteran and breaking the ice and and asking those questions because in most cases it's like someone with a disability. Mm -hmm. um, might want to talk about yeah. why, how they became blind or how they lost their leg. I think that it's really, conversations, yeah, it's, it's engagement and it's, really just learning from one another. It is. Mm. And if you are able to do that, I think you'll find a, a very good, um, happy place to, to have a conversation and to understand yeah. each other a lot better. If you don't confront the elephant in the room, if you don't ever feel comfortable talking about it, you'll never uh, get past that. It's a really good point. Steve, Thank you so much. I know you're really, really busy in your corporate job here in New York City. And for you to take the time to talk about this topic, which I think is so important for so many people, I really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks it's for been coming. A pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, guys. We'll see you next time.